So I took this over to my buddy, it's cast iron, and we tried to weld it. Now disclaimer, I am not a welder, but I play one on YouTube. And I, uh, since I have a YouTube account, I am also an expert in all things that I can look up on YouTube. So I know exactly what I'm doing and you should always listen to everything that I say. Uh, that's guaranteed. This is not a guarantee. Everything that I just said is completely false. So, took it over to my buddy to try and weld it with his MIG welder. Knew it was probably not gonna work, but he has a way better chance of welding a good bead on there that would seal than I do. And uh, so here was the attempt on that. That didn't look good to me. Hmm. Yeah, that's all cracked. And since that didn't work, I am back here in my shop. And I have a few things to work with here. I have some nickel rod. Sorry, a little uh, glare there. I have some JV weld and I have some engine paint. I have a torch over there with a rosebud on it. I have a air hammer there with a, uh, a point uh, chisel on it. And I am going to attempt to arc weld this myself. Or stick weld it, whatever you want to call it. So, I don't know, you're along for the ride with me. You, uh, you'll get to see if this works or fails just like I do. So here we go. Okay, well, here was the attempt at that, at MIG welding. I mean, I already ground this out a little bit, but uh, let's see how close it'll go. You can see, still porous, a lot of bubbles coming up. He said he could, he could feel it, but... I think it did get some fusion over here on this side, but I don't know. I'm going to try and fill it in with this nickel rod and I can always just keep grinding it out. And if I crack the whole thing, even worse, that's not a crack right there. If I crack the whole thing, even worse, I still have that other housing and I can convert to category three. Okay. So I'm going to try and do what, uh, is sometimes referred to as cold welding or basically it's kind of like a stitch weld over top of itself so you don't just do one continuous bead so you don't heat it up as much so you shouldn't require as much preheat and you shouldn't require as much post heat since you haven't put that much heat into it so I've got my torch I am gonna preheat it but not to the temperature that it recommends uh, cause that is going to be hard to accomplish with all this together. This thing says 700, 800. Uh, <clears throat> I'll probably go more like 300. So, uh, and then they also say to, to hit it with a, to peen it somehow. Um, like an air chisel like that with a, uh, kind of a chisel on the end is best and it, that helps it right after you weld like right after you weld to hit it with that and that is supposed to help it uh so it doesn't stress so much right away um so that the contraction of the heat doesn't i don't know you're supposed to flatten it out uh, who knows this may all just be old wives tales and maybe black magic it may just be bogus but i've heard it works so i'm gonna give her a try this casting is like an inch thick back here, so it might take a little while. But uh, basically I'm gonna heat it until uh, I can see the oil that's in some of these holes start to smoke. Then I'm probably gonna leave it alone for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna heat it back up again. Just so that that heat continues to travel throughout the whole piece. 
I don't really know what I'm doing. This is all just speculation. I'm not a metallurgist. Uh, I, I'm not a welder. I'm not a, a uh, definitely not a cast iron welder. I don't know, this may turn into a uh, Chucky 2009. So in case you're wondering why I'm doing this, instead of some other method, uh, I don't have access to a TIG welder. I mean, I could take this to a shop, but uh, it's going to cost more than what that other housing over there cost me. Plus uh, what it would probably cost to go get the extra Category 3 three-point pieces. So, like, this, this is still cheaper even if I just totally break this thing and there's nothing usable on it it should still be cheaper plus I want to learn how to do this you don't know how to do this unless you try you'll never get good at it if that's going to work or if this is going to crack afterwards. I know, I don't know if you can see, the crack on the bottom looks like it has gotten wider. But that one doesn't really matter. That one doesn't hold anything. It doesn't hold fluid. And of course, that's the one that they welded. Whoever owned this before me. Hopefully, hopefully this won't crack. I don't know. I'd like to see this succeed, but because if I fail, then I'm not really sure what exactly I did wrong. But I don't have a big sandbox to bury this in, so <coughs> I'm gonna have to cover it with something. I don't know what yet. I think the post heating is actually supposed to not eliminate the need for covering it and letting it cool slowly, but reduce the chances of something happening because I'm immediately warming it back up and then kind of relieving the stress again from everything around it that just got heated up by the welder. That's how I understand it at least. Probably wrong.
then of course that big booger sticking out I got to grind that flat so it's uh, parallel with the mating with the gasket mating service so I kind of built that up a little more tried to get in uh, as much as I, you know whatever I thought was needed to plug the hole on the inside but then on that flat I tried to build it up a little bit there I don't know if I'll take it over to my buddy to have him machine it on the lathe flat uh, or if I'll just get it down a ways with the grinder and then take a file to it and do it that way.